Today we celebrate the epiphany of the Lord. Epiphany means manifestation or appearance. Basically, God, who became a little baby born for us in Bethlehem, has now been manifested to all the peoples of the world, represented by the three wise men or the three kings. They represent all of us. Thank the Lord that Jesus has come for all peoples. And today, my hope is to help you, one, recognize the epiphanies in your life. The way that God manifests himself, the way that God appears to you hundreds of times every day to recognize these epiphanies are very important. And secondly, that you become stars. It seems like everybody in the world wants to be a star, but the only true star is the one who leads people to Jesus. Amen? Amen. Do you want to be a star? you got to lead people to Jesus. And Mary is known as the star of the sea. And I urge you at some point today to reflect on who in your life were those stars that led you to Jesus. Pray for them, be grateful for them, and learn from their example. Maybe it's your parents, your grandparents, your godparents, another person who was really living the Catholic faith, and of course, our Blessed Mother and the saints. They're the stars. We're all called to be stars. But what I want to give you is five lessons, five lessons. You have five fingers on each hand. Five lessons that we can learn from the way that the wise men were led to Jesus they gave their gifts to Jesus and they lived their lives in a new way after meeting Jesus and were sure they went and proclaimed Jesus to others. So are you ready? These five steps for you to have the most blessed 2024 of your life. This is just a beginning for the rest of your life. So I'm going to give you the outline and we'll go a little bit more deeply into it. Here's the five steps. One, they recognized the star. That means their heads were up, their eyes were up towards God. Not just looking at earthly things, they were already earthly kings. They had kingdoms, they had wealth. But they realized there was more. Amen? There's more. Amen. Keep your eyes on God. Recognize the star. Okay, two, they left everything that's passing away. They left kingdoms. They left everything for a hard journey. We need to be letting our little kingdoms go. How many times in our lives do we try to control our little kingdoms? And believe me, brothers and sisters, it really gets difficult when a husband or a wife acts like it's their little kingdom and they're trying to control the other. <laughs> Just a word for those who have ears, okay? <laughs> Let's leave those little controls and those little kingdoms. Little kingdoms, my little kingdom. I mean, e even the priest... It, it, it's, it's terrifying sometimes when the priest acts like the church is his kingdom. No, this is God's kingdom. Amen? Amen. <laughs> so there's only one king, Jesus Christ, king of kings, lord of lords, and we all get to be members of the kingdom, okay? So we leave these little kingdoms, okay, for a hard journey. Third step, there's going to be difficulties. They overcame the difficulties. They came to the so-called King Herod. 
you know, and, and talking about little kingdoms, he's actually a tetrarch, which means he had a portion of the kingdom with his two brothers. He wasn't even the king of the whole Holy Land. He had two sections of the four, but a little kingdom. And if he would, would have accepted Jesus, he would have had a real kingdom. Now, that's the King Herod, what I just spoke about was the King Herod who crucified Jesus. But his father, yes, okay, he was the king of the whole Holy Land, but it's still a little kingdom. You understand? And he should not have been threatened by the true king. But when you run up against people who want to be the kings of this world, and you say, I'm a Catholic, and Jesus is my king, and Mary's my queen, you're going to have opposition. Because there's people who want to control you in this world and want you to belong to their little oppression and domination. We'll get to that, okay? Fourth step. Once you meet Jesus, you give him your gifts, gold, frankincense, myrrh. We'll go into what those gifts represent. But the most important gift you can give Jesus is yourself and your marriage and your family and everything you have. Like Mary gave everything to Jesus. Like St. Joseph gave everything to Jesus. Like every saint gives everything to Jesus. Ask Jesus, Jesus, what do you want for your birthday? It's still the Christmas season. Ask him. I'm not going to answer the question for you, but love requires totality. Love requires totality, okay? So give your gifts to Jesus. Fifth step, when they met Jesus, they went back by another way. Jesus is known as the way, the truth, the life. Now we live in the way who is Jesus. We live in the truth who is Jesus, and we have eternal life which begins here and is fulfilled in Jesus. It changes our life. So here's the five steps, right? You recognize the star, the light. You move. You move. You can't just sit there and just think about things. You know, we have a book in the Holy Scriptures, the sacred scriptures called the Acts of the Apostles. It's not called the Thoughts of the Apostles. The Acts of the Apostles. Amen? Move! We got work to do. You have a tough journey. There's going to be oppositions. Keep persevering. Keep praying. Pray your daily rosary. Come to Mass as often as you can. Come to confession regularly. Get the strength living in the sacraments, to persevere. You give your gifts to Jesus, fourth and fifth. You change your way of life, the way you view things, okay? So let's go a little bit more deeply. Because all this relates to faith, hope, and charity. Faith is to see the light, the light of faith, and to live by the light. Hope is you're looking for for union with God, you're going to leave small things of this earth and you're going to go find the fulfillment of all your desires in Jesus. Hope. And then charity, you give your gifts to God, which means you give all of yourself to God and you bring others to God. Faith, hope, and charity. Okay, you understand? We just went a little bit deeper, just a little bit deeper. It applies to every step. Faith, hope, charity. Okay, so are you recognizing the epiphanies in your life? I mean, that star of Bethlehem was so bright. How was it that only a few people saw it? They all saw it, but they didn't change their lives, you see. They didn't move, which is the second step. You have to be looking for Jesus to appear to you. Every day, Jesus appears to you in the Word of God. Every day, Jesus appears to you, especially in the Eucharist. That's Jesus, really, truly, and substantially present. Body, blood, soul, and divinity. The Eucharist is Jesus. Go to Eucharistic adoration. You recognize Jesus when he speaks to you in prayer, I hope. When you build that relationship. La oración is una relación. Prayer is a relationship. You start to understand the voice of God in you. And you're aware of 
the voice of the enemy who disturbs you, but you don't listen to him. You don't talk to the enemy. But you recognize how Jesus appears to you every day. It'll change your life. Look for the star. Look for the manifestation. Look for the light. Let faith guide you. Leave your little kingdoms. Be detached from things of this world. We all know those things that are holding us back. We know those things where we say, I know I should pray more. I know I should serve the poor more. I know I should do this. I know I should do that. But what is that thing that you need to get rid of? Maybe a little less sleep. Maybe a little bit more sacrifice. The journey is going to be hard. You're going to meet opposition. Let's be honest, Catholics. When we stand up for our Catholic faith and the teachings of the faith, the world hates us because the kingly rulers of this world want to control us, but we have our King Jesus Christ and our Queen Mary. And we live by the teachings of the Catholic Church that are the same yesterday, today, and forever. They don't change. So when you stand up for life as sacred from conception to natural death, when you, when you stand up against abortion, which is killing babies in the womb of their mothers, when you say that unborn babies have the right to be born, you're going to be opposed. When you say that marriage is between one man and one woman and it's permanent forever, you're going to be opposed. When you talk about how people should dress modestly, <laughs> you're going to be opposed. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. When you tell people they shouldn't be watching certain TV shows or movies, well, who are you to tell me? <laughs> I'm just looking out for the good of your soul, brother or sister. Amen? You're going to be opposed. But pray to the Holy Spirit to keep persevering, right? Then when you meet Jesus, what do you do? You give him your gifts. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. They have great significance. Gold represents the gold of charity. Charity is gold in God's eyes. Loving God and loving your neighbor and loving yourself. Right? The gold of charity, you give that to Jesus. Frankincense is like incense. Our prayers go up to God like incense. Your prayer is your gift, okay? It's really a gift to you, but prayer is a gift you give to Jesus, right? Praying for others. Amen. Sacrificing for others. And then myrrh, myrrh represents the prophetic role. Myrrh is what they would, they would put on a body after the body died before they buried it. When you're going to proclaim that truth, I talked about the obstacles. When you proclaim the truth in love, you always do it with charity, but you proclaim the truth in season, out of season, convenient or inconvenient, so that all may be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. You're going to be opposed. Nobody wants to hear, you need to change your life. But guess what? If someone's using drugs and ruining their life, shouldn't you love enough to say, hey, brother or sister, I'm going to walk with you to help you get free from drug addiction. I'll just use that as an example, right? You're going to get opposed. Alcoholism, people addicted to pornography and, and all kinds of impurity, all these things. I don't want to go on that negative path. You're aware of when you're going to be opposed, but you give that gift to Jesus because we're going to go to the cross. That already foreshadowed Jesus going to the cross, the myrrh, okay? Okay? But we always do it in love, right? Proclaim the truth in love, but you got to proclaim the truth because proclaiming the truth is love. Okay. Then, when you really meet Jesus, it says they went back by another way. They didn't go back by the worldly way. Now you've been touched by Jesus and you go in the way of, of divine love. You go in the way of the teachings of Jesus Christ, given in the church, the revelation of Jesus, and the... The magisterium of the church which serves the revelation of Jesus. And so the teachings of the church don't change. They help us understand Jesus who's the way, the truth, the life. Okay, so let's go through it, brothers and sisters. Five things we can learn at least from the wise men. You want to be wise men and wise women, right? 
these kings who left kingdoms. Okay, step one. What is it? Look for the star. Look to live by faith. Look for the light. Hundreds of times a day, Jesus is appearing to you. Okay? Two. You're going to leave the world and little kingdoms and attachments. You're going to go on a difficult journey, but God's with you. Three. You're going to be opposed, but you're going to persevere because your hope is, I want the world to be a place of love and peace and joy and everything that comes with the kingdom of God. I want Jesus to rule my life. I want Mary to be my queen, mother. I want to live a different way than what this world offers. You're going to be opposed by the world. Four, you're going to give your gifts to Jesus, charity, prayer, and you're going to proclaim the truth in love, bringing people to the Catholic Church. And fifth, you're going to live your life in a different way. You're going to think the way Jesus thinks. You're going to see the way Jesus sees. You're going to act the way Jesus acts. You're going to speak the way Jesus speaks. You're going to love the way Jesus loves. You're going to live in the way, the truth, the life, okay? So the main point, as I start out with, is this. There's hundreds of of epiphanies every day, especially if you pray the rosary, if you pray scripture, if you come to the holy sacrifice of the mass, which we need to do every Sunday and holy day of obligation, but even more than that, when you go to Eucharistic adoration, when you pray, you're going to have epiphanies. God's going to manifest himself to you. Look for them, okay? And then, then secondly, now you receive Jesus, you become a star Because then you can lead people to Jesus. Lead people to Jesus. Be a true star. Be like Mary, star of the sea. When the wise men came to the manger scene, who was the one that helped them recognize Jesus as the newborn king? Of course, the queen mother who's holding the baby, right? When you look for the baby, you're going to look for the mother first. Where's the mom? Okay? Mary always helps us understand Jesus, and then Jesus reveals the Father to us, and the Father and Jesus send the Holy Spirit to us. So, there's a lot there, brothers and sisters. Please don't just, you know, say, well, that that really sounded good, Father. Apply it to your life. And this way you'll have the most blessed 2024 and the most blessed Catholic life possible. If you're looking for these epiphanies, You move, you go through obstacles, you give gifts to Jesus and you let him change your life. Stay close to Mary and Joseph and recognize that you're called to be stars. Thank God for all those stars he gave you in your life that led you to Jesus. Amen. Amen.